So some people believe that you can solve really, really tricky problems by just coming up with a solution and just simply doing it. We don't really think that the world works like that. We think that you need to iterate. What does iterate mean? Well, it means that you need to take steps. Take steps doesn't mean taking thousands of years. It just means that you try something, you learn from the thing, you try something else or you try a second version of that, you learn from that and then you finesse it and over time you actually come up with a solution. I think we see it all over the place. I think we see it in our personal lives. I think we see it in more developed states and how they've emerged over time. Now, people will say to me, well, how do you iterate? How does it work precisely? And what I thought I would do is just go through very, very quickly uh, the exact process that I tend to use in countries. Some people who are familiar with action research will be familiar with this kind of approach because it's actually the approach that action researchers take when they are doing experiments with real people in real places. This isn't about controlled trials, it's about doing work with real people who have flesh and blood. Where things go right and things go wrong and where the things that you have to learn are things that you're not controlling and therefore that are surprising you at every turn. So let me tell you where I start. We've probably, uh, you've heard me speak a lot about problems. And so I'm not going to go through the process of defining a problem, but that's really the starting point. It's working with the group to define the problem. When they define the problem and they break the problem down, they get empowered, they get inspired, and you start to say to them, what ideas do you have to actually solve the problem? They come up with some new ideas, and some of these ideas may be best practice ideas that they've seen in other places. That's fine. Some of them may be ideas that actually came from the past and people have given up on. That's fine. Some of the ideas may be crazy. That's also fine. It's actually better if you're dealing with a team and people are trying three or four different things and they, they, they're using those things to look for new ideas again and also to look for new information. The thing that I'll do very quickly out of this is I'll say to people, okay, what are you doing on Monday? What is the action that you're doing in the iteration that goes after this discussion about the problems and the ideas? And this is something that many people don't get to when they do the kind of work that I do. A lot of design thinkers spend a lot of time designing the problem and designing the new ideas, but this jump to implementation is something that doesn't really happen. It's very important where I work that I have authorization to go beyond a conversation and into action, which means that someone has to authorize that the people involved in this conversation are going to be available to work on this project next week, next month, and probably for six months to come. So the thing is that they go straight into action, and this action stage is really important. Everybody needs to have tasks. Everybody needs to be trying something of these new ideas, and they need to be doing them quickly. Usually the first iteration I'll have will be two or three days or a maximum of a week. And then at the end of that time, you have your results, whatever they may be. Maybe people have gone out and they've had two conversations with people that they hadn't had before to go gather new information. Maybe that was a key idea. In a recent place I worked, the key idea was, well, maybe we need to be speaking to another agency. And they went and they spoke to the other agency, and at the end of the week they came back, and we had a conversation about what they learned in that process. Now, I ask four questions about the learning. I say, what is it that you did? What is it that you learned? What are you having trouble with? And have you asked anybody for help? I ask that of all the individuals who are involved in this iteration, and I also ask it of the group. And then we get together and we talk about what it is that we learned that made a difference that we haven't done before. And we also take some of the results and we create a product for the authorizers so that they know that they are authorizing something that's moving in a positive direction. We may not have solved the problem, but we have some gains. We then move into a discussion about, well, did what we do solve the problem? And if the answer is yes, then we don't have to iterate again because we've completed our task. But if the answer is no, we go back into a second iteration which may involve redefining the problem again based on the new information we have, or it may just involve establishing a new set of ideas and then going straight back into action again, back into our experiential learning, and then asking the question. What I find over time is that the iterative steps broaden because the set of actions becomes uh, more expansive. Um, usually it'll go from a few days to a week to two weeks to a month, maybe to three months. This is where the 100-day approach comes in, but in my work it comes in a few, few steps down the line. Always you're trying to learn, always you're trying to build authority, and always you're focused on, did we solve the problem? This is iteration. It's not something that takes a thousand years, it's something that can be done really quickly. In my experience, it's often done quicker 
than some of the donors prepare their projects.